Hi, welcome back to Ideas Box, and if this is your first time, thanks for dropping by. My name's Jimmy, and today's video was supposed to be quite short, but it ended up being a little bit longer than I thought. But it's pretty comprehensive, and it covers the problem I had with getting a piece of um, flue from a pizza oven through a flat wall, through, through a vertical wall at 45 degrees. I actually looked on the internet to try and find a solution to drawing a oval that would encompass a circle passing through it at 45 degrees. All the results I got were how to cut a, a diamond into a shape of an oval, so I don't think that's a problem I'll, I'll ever have. And frankly, if you have to Google how to do that, you probably shouldn't be cutting diamonds. But anyway, what I did was I, I did part of the calculation myself and the other part I got off the internet. Um, so have a look at the video and, and I hope you find it entertaining or interesting and I hope it solves a problem for you. Okay, let's get into it. It's a bit warm in here today. So I've got a new ceiling fan above my workbench while I draw out this template for putting the 50 mil flue, no, the 150 mil flue through the panel on behind our pizza oven. So it's a bit warm in here today, so I'm going to turn on my ceiling fan that I've made to look like a P3 Orion propeller. It's got the Hamilton standard <laughs> decals and everything. So it, wob it looks like it wobbles a bit because the end of that cone is not very, near, very flush, but it keeps me cool, so let's kick it in the guts. There we go. That should help keep me cool. As long as I don't get struck by a propeller, I don't do a Jack Newton. Is anybody old enough to remember the Australian golfer Jack Newton that walked into a propeller? What was it, back in the 80s? Anyway, that'll keep me cool while I draw out this template to cut a hole in the backing for our pizza oven for that 150mm flue there. Right, let's get into that, shall we? Okay, so as you can see, I've had a bit of a practice, so I've worked out what I'm doing. I've already done one, but now I'll show you the steps I took to work out how to make an oval shaped hole to fit something through at 45 degrees. So the first thing I did was get a piece of blank paper to make sure that it's, everything's hunky dory, and then the only reason I made these two creases and drew a line roughly down the centre was so that my circle or my oval that I end up with doesn't go off the edges of the paper because that would be a pisser. So that's there, halfway, just so that I'm in the centre of the piece of paper, 290 something. So, you know what, 150 is near enough. So you go across there, I know my pipe is 150 mil diameter so if I so half of that is 75 so I'm going to give it a little bit of clearance I'm going to give it like 77 and then 77 this side of it there we go so that's about seven about 77 from that center there so I'm going to go 77 77 I'm going to draw some parallel lines and you'll see in a minute why I'm drawing those parallel lines it is so that we can there's 77 and there's 77 so now you draw these two lines are parallel to the center line there now it'll become apparent in a second why I've done this I worked this bit out myself the nail and string thing I use later I found on the interwebs but I did this bit, I worked this bit out myself so now you need a line at 45 degrees to your centre line so there's your centre line that's the international symbol for centre line so there's your centre line so if you draw a line like that okay the reason I've done that is we need this measurement here from that line there that point there to that point there which is 220 
So I'll write 220 there so I don't forget it. So 220 from the centre is 110. Either way is 110. 110 that way. And 110 this way. So just double checking that overall distance is 220. Yes it is. So now my oval is going to be that wide and that long. So this is the bit I got off the internet. You get your dividers and you set them from your center point there to there. I'm just going to bring that in a weeny bit. So your center point from there to there. And just double check that it, ma it mates up with the other one. And it does. Good. So then you go across. Actually what I might do, I might just draw a line across there at 90 degrees. So then you take your dividers, you put it there, and then you go up to there, go from there to there, you make a mark in the paper, and you find your little hole there, yep, you go there to your centre line, you make a mark in your paper, then you put A nail in there and you put a nail in there. These are the two holes that I just made with the dividers. Now the trickiest part to be honest you have to make a loop with a piece of string that is that dimension from there to that mark there so that's 190 but you really have to have a go. You tie a couple of knots and see if you can get it pretty close and this one here is almost spot on, maybe just a fraction short. I'll just see if I can get a bit more stretch out of those knots. Oh, there we go, that might be enough. Make sure you don't get the white, the string crossed over. So, you make sure, yep, that's spot on there now. That's perfect, beautiful. So make sure that's this string is not crossed over and it's the other side of that nail. Then you get your pencil do that doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy because you're just going to use this as a depends on the string you're using this string a bit not a bit fibrous and it keeps separating but so there we go so there's the oval that I need to cut out now to make my template so now that I know that works, and now that I know those two nails are 157 apart, what I'll do is pull them out, and this is the piece of masonite that I'm going to use to make my template. So I'll whack a nail in there. Then in a straight line down the centre. What was that measurement again? I've forgotten that already. 157, that's right. See what happens when you get old? So 157, so 157. So I'll whack a nail in there. This one, I might be able to scratch with a nail. No, I need a pencil. Now this one is the one I'm going to cut out. So I keep my pencil angled very slightly out to stop the string from running up on it. There we go. So that is my template now. If I cut that out, so now I'll cut that out and we'll fit it around the bit of we'll fit it around the piece of uh, chimney flue and we'll see how that goes. I tried to cut it with my bandsaw, so I did an entry cut, but I couldn't get it to follow the curve, so I'm just gonna have to cut it with um, my jigsaw. I just need to put a 
slightly finer blade, where's the light? Slightly finer blade in that. Right. There's my template to go around this at 45 degrees and look at that. I don't know if you can see that but that is just about perfect. I can't believe that. Come down here for a second. Have a look at that. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. And there's your 45 degrees, that's brilliant. All right, well I'll use it to cut a hole in the tin and put the flue on and we'll see how we go. So that's approximately where the flue has to go. Just up from that texture mark there, so the oval will be about there somewhere. So let's mark that out and see how we go. So I've actually marked this with the vertical and the horizontal because I reckon I'll end up keeping this. So that's going to go there. Yep, that's going to go there. Um, I guess there's no putting off any longer. Let's mark it out. Once again, this is just marking out. I may need to trim it a wee bit more. So that's where the hole's going to go. So hopefully, I don't mess this up because this stuff's not cheap. So let's see how we go. Got my electronic earmuffs, which are actually quite good. I think, were they 20 or 30 bucks, maybe 10 years ago? They seem to keep working. So let's cut this hole out now.
there. That's not too bad. I'll make a little bit of flat. I'll cut some flat flashing to go around that in two halves. And that'll look fine, I think, once it's done. As you can see, it's 45 degrees through the tin there. So I'll put the top piece on and maybe we can use the pizza oven this weekend. So there it is from the outside. Our pizza oven with our spark arrestor. I don't know if you can see that. That's it from the outside. I'm not sure about those tails of those tech screws. I might cut them off with a grinder. I've actually decided what I'll do is I'll put a, an exact same piece of flashing on the outside and then cut the tech screw tails off flushed with the surface. But have a look at the inside. Doesn't look too bad at all. I'm fairly happy with that. I think overall that's come up all right. Yep. Happy with that. So, in conclusion, if you want to put something of a, say the diameter is X, through a panel at 45 degrees, you need to calculate what that oval there is going to be. And once again, like, I, like you saw earlier, what I did was, I drew a center line, and then this was 150, so I did about two mil bigger, so 77-ish. Two lines of parallel to your center line, then a line through there at 45 degrees, and that measurement there is how long your oval is going to be. I.e., if that dimension there is A, then that is A. So you then take your dividers, you put your dividers between there and there. So this is the bit I got off the internet, the parallel line and the 45 thing I worked out myself. But you take your dividers, put a mark there, your dividers, put a mark there, and then your string is that dimension there. So we'll call that S for string, okay? So then your, your string loop has to be that big, and that will make your pencil trace an oval shape like that. And it sounds complicated, but if you have a go at it yourself, it's, it's, it's not too difficult. It just took me a while to work out how to work out a 45 for the, for the diameter. So that's your diameter. That's the 45 of your diameter, which is how long your oval is going to be. And then you use the string method to cut to draw your oval. And as you can see from earlier in the video, it worked a treat. It, it, it worked better than I was expecting. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. Um, it certainly solved a problem for me. So if it can solve a problem for you, that'd be great. That's the whole idea of these videos. Make sure to click that like and subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell too. Alright, well I reckon that's it for today, so bye for now.